All right, this next question came from Mina from FiresideChat.com. I just discovered your channel and I am learning a lot. Well, thank you very much for your support. Uh, I just finished grad school about a month ago and I am $15,000 in student loan debt. I also have a car loan. I owe about $4,000. I don't have any credit card debt, but we do have a mortgage. I pay about $2,000 a month. I make about $75,000 a year and my husband makes $80,000 a year. Our finances are combined, but we're trying to figure out how to get started. We have $8,000 saved in our emergency fund and $50,000 in our 401k and IRA. Should we max out our 401k and IRAs now and use the extra money to pay down our car loan and student debt? So congratulations to Mina for completing the degree. If you were sitting here right in front of me, the first question I ask is how your income will increase with a graduate degree that you just earned. How much your income increases really depends on the field that you're in. So the earnings increase from the bachelor's level to the master's level is about 15 to 20% on the national average. You're most likely to earn more if you switch from one company to another. So during the great resignation in 2021, and this is according to CNBC. I'll pull up the article on the, the screen here. People who switch jobs got more increase in annual income than staying at their old jobs. I don't know if your current job that's paying you $75,000 a year is after you got your degree, but I would either ask for a raise at your current job or explore other companies that might pay you more. So uh, let me pull up the uh, Department of Labor data. And according to the Department of Labor, Americans with master's degree on average earn about $1,545 a week. And that's the national average. So it really depends on your experience and the career field that you're in. And with the labor shortages, you should be earning heck of a lot more. And if you do some research in your career field and how much your employers pay people like you with a master's degree. So between you and your husband, you guys are making $155,000 a year, and that's really good. You can theoretically pay off your student loan and your car in less than a year. Let me do some math for you here. So you have $8,000 saved in your emergency fund, and how much of that do you need to cover in uh, for your medical deductible, the car insurance deductible if you get into a car accident? So let's say you need $2,000 to cover your medical and car insurance deductibles. That leaves you $6,000. I would put $4,000 towards the car loan now. So you have $2,000 left. And I know it's scary to take money out of your emergency fund right now, but the interest rates on your loans are making you lose more money in the long term. And once you pay that car loan off, you can use that uh, car payment and put that towards your student loan. Your $15,000 student loan will now go down to $13,000 if you use the remaining $2,000 from your emergency fund. So keep in mind, you still have $2,000 in your emergency fund. $13,000 divided by 12 months is about $1,083. And let's round that up to $1,100. You guys both make $155,000 a year. So I'm going to guess you make about $11,000 a month in take home income. So $1,100 a month towards your student loan is 10% of your income every month. So yes, you can pay off your student loan by the end of this year. Your question was whether you should max out your 401k and IRAs while you're tackling this debt. I would recommend that you only contribute up to your employer match with your 401k and pause on your other investments until this debt is paid off. Here's another scenario is you can aggressively pay off your student loan within the next six months while you pause your extra investment to 401k and IRA. If you pay $2,200 a month towards your student loan for the next six months, you will be completely debt free. And what you want to do after that is to rebuild your emergency fund for the last six months of 2022 by putting the same energy you did towards your student loan to your emergency fund. Since both of you are working and making good income, you want to save about three months of your expenses towards your emergency fund. If your monthly expenses are totaled $5,000, then you'll need $15,000. With your income though, you can fully fund your emergency fund within six months. Trust me when I say having an emergency fund is really important. Just remember how 2020 happened and a lot of people lost their jobs. And having an emergency fund can prevent you from carrying credit card debt or taking out a loan to cover your expenses. I want you to ask yourselves the following questions 
when you're building an emergency fund. How much would it cost you to fly home in case of a family emergency? How much would you need to pay out of pocket for the insurance deductible after you get into a car accident? And how much would you need to set aside for a medical emergency? If you lose your job tomorrow, how much money do you need set aside each month to keep a roof over your head? If you're in a dual income family and one of you loses your job tomorrow, could you live on one person's income until you find a new job?